Appointment generation. How is it that you get appointments and leads for fractional sales consulting deals? In this video, I'm gonna explain kind of the 10,000 foot overview along with some granular strategies that you can use today to go out and get the attention of potential business owners that you could sign as a fractional sales consultant. I run into a lot of concerns or sales professionals that are not really certain of the strategy or the direction that I advise you guys to go. Because the truth is fractional sales consulting clients are really different than traditional marketing agencies in the sense where you don't have a fixed offer that you are claiming and promising and pushing to the market one to one to one. So how is it that you find that resonance or get the attention of someone where they believe you enough to want to pay you three, five, or $10,000 a month as a fractional consultant? And this is the strategy that I use. Even our students right now are using to get deals like Ethan who closed a 3K a month deal, Desmond who closed a 5K a month deal, and even Dakota that closed a 5K a month deal as well. So let's go ahead and jump into the first one. The first one is going to be your network. Now I know what you're thinking, oh, network and go out and meet business owners. And believe me, I used to really not understand or enjoy the concept of networking because I'm like, what is the purpose of this? I'm just meeting people for the sake of meeting people. But the truth is people, networking isn't about just adding people to your contact list, to your book for one day you'll make an ask. It's about generating awareness in a more relationship based way as to what you do and the value that you have to offer. Now, an important part of this is that you, the person watching this, have to have some commitment to the direction you want to go within your career and within yourself. If one week you're an email marketer, then you're a cold caller, then you're an appointment setter, then you're a closer, then you're doing astro flipping or Amazon FBA, it won't work because you're not known for something and you're not building what is called a reputation, which is by far one of the most important things that you will develop and must have as a fractional sales consultant or just to be successful in business in general. The largest brands are trusted because of their reputation. There's a large pharmaceutical company once that had a problem because a bunch of ibuprofen was uh, improperly labeled or the dosage was wrong and a bunch of people got sick. So they added the safety seals to them though the, the tamper-proof packaging to see if anybody had messed with them. And that made a huge difference as far as helping that brand secure and uphold their reputation in the eyes of consumers and actually solving the problem. They also refunded a ton of customers, right, for people who had gotten bad products. And so that similar concept must apply to yourself within your career, which is having a reputation. But let's talk about networking specifically. What exactly should you do? How do you contact people and how do you bring that to a deal? Well, the people you need to contact are people who are in the industries that you've worked in, like remote sales. And what you must say is, hey, I'm now in the direction or I'm now beginning to do fractional sales consulting or I'm interested or I'm starting, I'm looking for someone who might need help with their sales process development. Now there's three things I said there. One, tell people, hey, I'm doing fractional sales consulting. Do you know anybody who needs help with systems and processes? Two, hey, I do you know anybody who potentially needs help with their sales process and sales systems? Or three, hey, how are you liking the offer and how it's going? Now I say three, how are you liking the offer and how it's going? Because that's how I got my first deal, believe it or not, was there was a salesperson who came to me, just curious about what it is that I was doing with myself. We were friends. Uh, we had worked in somewhere in the past. During that conversation, I asked him, hey, what do you think about the offer? You know, he was selling something very really similar that I had sold. And he said, hey man, it's crazy, it's chaotic. And I was like, well, how do you mean by that? We're having a hard time with marketing. All these things are changing. And I was like, well, interesting. Would you mind connecting me with a business owner? I'd be interested to speak with him. I know a lot about this. He said, I can't do that directly, but I do know the number two I could connect you with. But what would you want to talk to him about? Now that's the first concern you're going to get because when it comes to reputation, just like yourself, you don't want to make a dunce of yourself. You don't want to make your friend look like an idiot either. And so this is when I say networking, it's not as aggressively or as intent based as you might like it to be. There's a lot of rational people who are watching this and that is okay. Rationality is a fine way of operating, but you must kind of relax and lean into the relationship and just let the attraction happen. Let your value kind of show itself. Don't make it a point to try to force your value in front of somebody and market really, really aggressively. Just make them aware of the competency and skill you have. You see, someone who's really good at something doesn't need to explain to others that they're good. They are just known and it's perceived that they are good. It's like a confident sales individual. When you show up to the conversation, he doesn't have to say, hey, just so you know, I'm a world class closer, you just see it in the conversation how he carries himself, that his experience and competency is there. So when you're approaching individuals or trying to work your way up organizations, be kind of loose with your intent. You don't have to be so forthcoming of saying, hey, I'm a fractional consultant, this, that, and the other, I might be able to make them an offer because that person doesn't want to set their higher up to get pitched, to get closed on. No one wants to get brought into a sales engagement. People want to get brought into a place where they can get consulted and genuinely get advice. So when it comes to networking, you have the couple of things I'd mentioned a moment ago, figure out how to get yourself in touch with business owners and just offer value, just offer value. 
Don't give value with no expectation of anything coming back to you in return. And with that, you know, some element of reciprocity might show. And the signs that you have reciprocity or developing reciprocity is when people begin to show an interest in you. Show an interest in others until eventually they show an interest back. That's what happened with me with one of my first clients deal. The salesperson that connected me to sales manager, sales manager, I just offered value with no expectation. I considered maybe closing for him, but I didn't act. I didn't make an ask. I didn't want anything from them. I just wanted to help and give value genuinely. And eventually there came a point where they were interested enough in me. Hey, who are you? What's your background? And that's when I got pulled into things, brought into a group chat, that deal closed, flown out to Vegas and so on and so forth. If you want to learn more about that, there's another video on my channel. So the first one is network. And now the second one is going to be cold outbound. So this is equally as effective if you have a little bit of a brand or a reputation. If you don't have a brand or reputation, don't worry about that. Having a brand and people and following and status is something that um, is definitely helpful um, as far as just getting people to respond to you. Because once they see and recognize your status, they know that you're someone of value. See, you don't accumulate followers without having something that a lot of people would like. And if you have something a lot of people like, it means you have value. That's kind of how status works in a nutshell. But cold outbound, whether you have a network or not, what you can do is take the resources that you have and package them up really nicely and tightly and begin offering them to people. Just give value. Don't worry about the response. Just say, hey, this is the script that I used. Let me give you three examples because a lot of people use the strategy that I talked about in my under the radar client acquisition. Once more, that is linked down below the cheat sheet I mentioned that's linked down below, but watch that after this video. And, and in addition to what that says, the most important thing in offering somebody your scripts or resources is specificity in the outcome that it produced and timelines and the company and or brand. So I just got off a call today with actually someone who was using this process. They were getting a 6% response rate. One of our other students got a 25% response rate. Now the difference between the two was the specificity in the message. This person was saying, hey, do you want my scripts? I sold something similar. A couple of them out of 27, two of them came back with a yes. But the difference between the two is the guy that was getting a 25% response rate was saying, hey, any interest, you didn't even say, hey, name, any interest in the scripts that I use to close X amount of money in this amount of time for a product similar to yours, respond with a thumbs up. Gave them a call to action, gave them an outcome. Really what that is, is an offer. Now for those of you guys who consume a lot of offer trainings and are like, well, what exactly are the whole offer things? Believe me, I found it a little confusing too. Like offer, the claim hook, how does that all together? In short, for client acquisition, you just must think of your offer as an outcome or an end goal or destination that you're gonna help somebody get to. Think in terms of transformation. What people are really interested in is the outcomes of what your work might produce for them. When you join somebody as a fractional consultant, they're not buying you to fix them today. They're buying the outcome of you from their business, which is more cash, better lifestyle, and all that goes into that. So when you're offering value, speak in terms of outcomes. Hey, this is the place that we got in this amount of time. And you'll also see on YouTube that a lot of those videos that follow a similar structure get a lot of views, like how I grew my agency in X amount of time, or even one of my videos, how I got to this amount of money in this amount of time using this model, you know, how I got this result in this amount of time using this strategy. So you want to be similar in your approach, you know, and it might take a little bit of time in playing around. Another thing that's going to help your cold out reaches the resource or the asset that you give somebody must also be specific. Don't give someone general or generic script. You want to give them exactly what they need to do and exactly what they need to say to get a result, which might be closing a better deal, increasing their show rate, getting more appointments, things of that nature. And the reason why you must do it exactly is because if there's any need for them to think, they just won't do it. Because for starters, they don't know you, they don't care, and you're giving them something that they didn't ask for. But if they do and are curious, you want to ride that curiosity by just giving them all the questions answered. Like in this video, for example, I'm trying to get as specific as possible because I don't want you to leave this video with loose ends. I want you to see how applicable and easy it is for you to use. And so it's the same thing you must also use in your outreach strategy. So that's when it comes to cold outreach. Now, who should you contact? Well, list out all the products that you've sold. Take a moment, maybe pause this video and do that. List all of the products that you have sold. And then after that, list all the people you know selling those products or companies you can find selling those products. Now you might have product A, product B, product C, product D, things of that nature. Then from there, pick one, circle one and say, this is where I'm starting. Then go into your archives or whatever you can, find any resources that you had from working with them, could be call recording scripts, any nuanced IP or things that you did that wouldn't be inherently obvious that were allowing you guys to get results. And if you're unsure of what those are, just think about the sales process in your head start to finish. What did the best lead look like? What did the best lead consume prior to showing up to the call? Write all this stuff down and maybe turn that into a document where you could even send that as your resource, which is, hey, how to better prepare leads for a sales call. This is what we were saying. This is what we were showing. Hey, these are things you should know. Now, I don't recommend that specifically because it's more ideas. You want to give people like as close as possible to a tactical, tangible, installable push button solution. The more that it can be that, the more effective it will become. You want to give people the magic. And so once you've gotten that, then begin contacting those people with the messages that I told you to use a moment ago. Now, the third strategy is going to be paid ads. Now, paid ads isn't exactly what you think. It also doesn't require a huge budget. One of our students, June, was able to put, well, we put $450 into ads and he got a 3K deal out of that. He also got a 1K 
deal and a 3K right after that as well. So $450 turned into 3K cash, more or less four because the other one closed after the ad campaign. Pretty good result. But you see ads when you're a fractional sales consultant aren't necessarily to, they serve two purposes. Ads are gonna help you build your brand and your awareness of who you are. And it's also gonna help you monetize your brand and awareness of who you are. Now I wanna talk about that in two folds because if you don't have a following, I recommend that you start with cold outreach and not go to ads. If you have some following, I recommend you start with ads. The reason being, ads do a really good way of letting people in your audience know what you are doing without you having to tell them in a manner that lets them come to you. So for example, the deal that one of our students, June, closed, this was a guy who already knew who he was, had already engaged on his Facebook and other places, saw the ad, responded, and was interested in what he had to offer, and just like that, a transaction or a deal to place. That's how you want to use ads. It's more of a strategic retargeting to your existing audience as opposed to a way to build your brand. Now you could use it to build brand, but until I've solved the code on that, I'm not going to recommend that you do it. But for those of you guys who have maybe a thousand, two thousand followers, you only need that many to begin running some ads and getting some interesting responses. You'll then get more interest, attention, people becoming aware of who you are. And of that, a deal might surface itself just because, hey, people didn't know. And this is why companies spend a lot of time focusing on brand awareness and things of that nature. So I hope you found this video helpful and I tried to go deep as possible into the tactics so you know exactly what to do and use. And if you want more of the full and complete strategy, click the first link down below to get access to the resource I created, the Under the Radar Client Acquisition Strategy. And you can use that starting today to go out there and get results. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.